Your number one go to God has not given you the spirit of fear, yeah, no, but no, of no, power, no. of love, no, and of a sound no. mind. Hello, guys. Hi, guys. You're welcome to our YouTube channel. This is Omomi, and this is Ira. Today, we are having a conversation on how to know you're ready for marriage, and we'll be giving some pointers inspired by the Holy Spirit um, on what to check for before you make the decision to get married. Yeah, so the first point is your conviction. You are very sure that you're supposed to get married to this person and then God's leading you both to a more serious journey, which is to get married. And the reason why we're starting with conviction is that really there's nothing that can be as strong as what you have inside. No matter what your pastor says, no matter what your friends say, no matter what your partner in fact says, it can be as strong as what the Holy Spirit or what you in your mind have decided to do. So when your conviction is so strong, you can tell that, okay, you are ready to get married. Yeah, and um, there was a time we had a video on, on conviction and um, we would like you to refer back to that video. Yeah. So, you know, when it comes to marital decision or decision as to whether to get married with a person or not, um, it is very important that you um, don't play, don't do permutation, mm. don't try to do statistics <laughs> with life decisions. Yeah. It is um, important that you actually are convinced and sure that that is what um, God will have you do mm. at that time. So, um, the next, the next point that we would talk about is about modeling. Um, you know, making that decision of who to get married. Um, is a critical one and you should already see it in your ma in your relationship that um, this is the kind of person you would want to get married to. You should already see the values in the relationship and how your marriage will look like. We are not saying you should go to the extreme but then um, there are some indicators in your relationship that should actually portray what your marriage would look like and um, by, by practicing all of these things you want to, we are not asking you to pretend, we are not asking you to, we are not asking you to, um, to act, act as though you're married, but we're saying that, you know, there are vital, silent indicators that would help you know that this is the right person to get married to, or maybe this is the right time to get married to this person. Well, the next point is stability. And we are not just, you know, talking about financial stability, we're talking about emotional stability, spiritual, and every area you can think of career-wise, purpose, purpose-wise. So if you have gained a level of stability in all of these areas that we have mentioned, it's a good indicator that you'll be able to help another person or that you are ready to also settle down. Imagine if you are not, you know, an emotionally stable person, you get angry easily, you get sad easily, like anything can just switch you off or switch you on. Imagine if you have to get married to someone who is like that too, and imagine having a marriage that is built on that kind of instability. It may not be good for you both. So it's good that if you notice any form of instability in your life or in your partner's life, that you both work on it, and then when you see that you're beginning to get better, then you may also want to decide to, you know, do the serious thing which is get married. Yeah, so, um, on stability, I, I think that stability is not about, you know, having it all figured yeah, out. Yeah, 100%. Yes. So, for example, with financial stability, you may want to um, make sure that you have a steady flow of income. You don't have, need to be extremely rich, yeah. like some people believe. Um, you need to have a steady flow of income. For emotional stability, you need to understand when to keep quiet during conflict issues or conflicting issues or, and when to talk. talk. Yes, and that is where that is what is going to usher me into the next step, which is um, you must actually um, be able to handle and manage conflict mm -hmm. amicably and maturely. So um, one of the very um, important factors to consider when making that marital decision from or when migrating or did I just say migrating? When, yeah, yeah, when, progressing, <laughs> when progressing from from relationship or courtship to marriage is if you both are managing conflict. So um, you both need to understand that um, you live together and 
there are times you'll be having decisions or making decisions and before you make such decision you may have to go over a topic and both of you may not actually be on the same term as regards to um, such topics uh, and you know that is when conflict or proper conflict management comes in so um, you both need to be able to manage conflict resolve conflicting issues resolve conflict um, without the third party interference first yeah yeah first yeah absolutely thank you so next point basically is having a sense of purpose this one can even be overemphasized it's not a matter of oh i have a conviction to get married i am financially stable I am this, I am that. But what are you both supposed to achieve together? Yeah. What are you supposed to do as a partner to this person? What is your marriage supposed to achieve? If you both have not discovered it, there is the, this is a very good time. Your dating period is a very good time to know what God will have you do. Yeah, your cutting period is just a very good time. So we'll be using dating, cutting interchangeably. Yeah. So your cutting period is just a very perfect time for you to know what God will have you do. One ministry, one mountain, you are supposed to take, keep forgetting, spiritual people forget it. But if you're not the extremely spiritual person, but what would, what change would God have your marriage during this life, in this world, before you both you know return to where you're coming from? Yeah. And, and you don't you don't need to have it all figured out like I mentioned earlier before you get married. But then there should be the conscious effort Jet towards discovering the problems. There should be that desire, the zeal to know that no, my marriage cannot just be about you. Know, mm, I like that pastor told my marriage. Cannot. Actually, it cannot. It cannot just be about you. Know, <laughs> <laughs> it cannot just be about you know. We just we just getting married and, and raising the I'm family. Just happy. You're just happy. You just you know. I there, there's a. I don't want to call it a concept, but there is this ideology that when you do that, you're trying to hold back what you have learned over time. So you're not trying to share with people, you're not trying to impact lives, make sure that people are a beneficiary of your, of your marriage, of what you are enjoying in your marriage. Yes, I was going to also mention that on the area of sense of couples, there is also a general purpose which is your marriage should be winning souls to God's kingdom and one thing we did during our cutting season was to go out on a bunch of like we went out to the streets and to the glory of God we had Muslims give their life to Christ we had different people get to know God better and see that actually God is welcoming and there were times when we were very bold about telling young people that we are actually in a relationship and we are dating yeah so we just thought as couples to dating couples to just come out and spread the gospel and also they were looking surprised but it is what it is on the nigerian street <laughs> yeah so that's another thing on sense of purpose your marriage your union your relationship should be adding to the kingdom of god should be doing better to the world it's not just about the whole romance and you know love love so uh, another important point that we that we're supposed to do at the beginning of this <laughs> is the area of counseling. Um, we usually advise people that you know um, once you accept to be in a cutting relationship with someone, you should commence your counseling. The goal of counseling to us is not just to get married; it is for you to learn. Yeah. And like our mom used to say, it helps you to um, have the knowledge of what to expect during marriage and it helps you to assess yourself to know if you are actually ready to get married or not. So, Absolutely. And I like that point you said on the goal of counselling is not to get married because many people, once they they fixed wedding dates, that's when they start going for counselling. No, that's not the point. The point is to help people get better, learn what to do as partners, how you can treat stuff, how you can resolve conflict. Their counselling is actually very interesting if you think of it, but I think the reason why people now have the idea that the reason why you should start counselling is when you have a wedding date is because of how church does it because they give you a period of maybe six months it has to be at least six months or something mm -hmm. but as soon as you start dating a person it's just like 
learning to take care of your baby when you give birth give to a child. Mm. It's not when the child is almost five years old. You now want to start running up and down. No, at this point, you need to start taking care of that child so that you can close on. Just see your relationship as a plant, like just you know, soon, so soon. What's the word? As a plant, soon into the ground. Yeah. Yeah, you have to start watching it, start treating it. You guys can start watching really nice videos, listening to counselors, watching marriage videos, dating videos. Just nurture your relationship and you see what it can attain when you do that. So yeah. that's a very good point. <coughs> so the next point is that you have dealt with your fears. Or you are currently working on it, dealing with it. Yeah, you have dealt with your fears, or you are currently intentionally dealing with it. I'm just going to be practical about it. So for me, I had a fear of cooking before marriage, and every time the conversation of cooking or on cooking just came up, it always was an argument. It was just always was something wrong. Is you not really to want to cook? Not uh -huh. really to want to cook? Did you want to? Cook? I ever give any response. Just if you just say he knows words. how to cook, do you, do you plan to cook? But what, what, mm -hmm. what else would I say when we get to the bridge? We will cross it. That's what he always says, and I'm like, no, we cannot do that, and especially because this is a fear. We <laughs> cannot get enter marriage, and then we will not be having issues of we married a woman that cannot cook. And my issue was even that I could not cook, or that I just did not like it. But now that, so what do we used to do? Every time we had arguments like that, we would just pray about it. Really, mm -hmm. because it was just beyond us. Like he always was like a real argument. Do you plan to cook or not? Be straightforward. And you're not giving straightforward. I'm not because you did not plan to. <laughs> so it's not like I didn't plan to. I just knew that uh, along the line, would result figure it out. Yeah, yeah. actually, if you, those previous points that we've mentioned, if you have already hacked them, this cooking thing is just not thing. Really. And again, you know, I had a conversation <laughs> with my mentor, that's uh, Mr. Musician. Yeah, we were. We yeah, had, we had a conversation, and yeah. he explained and shared his own. Uh, he shared, they shared their story too. Yeah, Mr. Shodin. Should I say? No, it? don't say it. It's okay. I said the point. <laughs> <laughs> She's very comfortable. No, we're not about to say not what you think. I'm about to say. Yeah. Anyway, but what's the point she said that did I still remember is um that mm. even if you're someone that didn't used to like cooking before marriage, but when you get married, you can't afford to see your husband go hungry or your family go hungry. Like as a woman you already have the natural instinct to want to take care of your home, to want to feed your husband and all those things. And I think for us, uh story is even around that and even better such that Israel is willing to cook now yeah. I am willing to cook as well in fact I will find it really I just try new Very stuff yeah like right? I'm always every time I mean, we see something I'm always like I'll do this one when, 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 I, when, I, cook, when I cook now I, I think it has a lot of service actually yeah yeah well it is it is so when when you've hacked like the whole conviction thing People are now on a purpose journey. Show you that purpose journey. Mm -hmm. Things like cooking, all those tiny yeah. things will not matter again. They will hold water again, water again yeah. as it relates to your marriage as people. And, and baby, um, yes, cooking is one, but there is there is more serious. There are more serious issues that could um, cause fear. One of them could be. Perhaps you just have a fear of uh, what if this thing doesn't work out. The marriage. marriage <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, and that is why we are, we are asking you to deal with it before you get into the marriage. Yeah, and the word of God is the you number know, one yes. go to. God has not given you the spirit of fear, yeah. but mm -hmm. of power, of love, love and, and a sound mind. mind. Yes. Yeah. So, once you start saying things like fear creeping, you just have to know that the number one principle is that God does not give you that kind of spirit. So, yes. it's most likely the devil. You being called to what you need to deal with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just an awareness of what you have to deal with. Really. Yep. So, um, just to succinctly put, I think um, the two ways to deal, with, the two foremost ways to deal, actually deal with fear is to expose yourself to the Word of God. <coughs> and if you have been following our videos, we keep repeating this Word of God, Word of God, Word of God. Yeah, expose yourself to the Word of God, and again. Be prayerful about it. Pray, pray. Yeah, and you know, practical. Like work on it. If you have yeah. fears, weaknesses too. Work on your weaknesses. Especially if you have like sexual weaknesses, deal with it before marriage. Like marriage doesn't kill those things. Mm -hmm. It 
after it doesn't, doesn't kill. Okay. So deal with the traditional violence. It's not because of marriage. Yeah. Anyways, can't be sure because that's our last point. So, so, this is my, <laughs> this is my favorite point. How can it be your favorite? <laughs> it's the weakest so, point, <laughs> weakest. So, 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 um, so another, another way to know you, you probably are qualified or ready Not qualified. <laughs> Not qualified. <laughs> Alright, is if you are born in. Um, born in. You're passionate. Mm. <laughs> You're hitting. <laughs> so um, one, one of the various ways to you to know after you've followed all of these steps is that um, you're constantly having sexual temptations. I, I had an, an aunt who I would always go meet anytime I had such sexual temptations and she'd be like, get married now. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> you know, actually. So marriage marriage actually helps you to keep warm during times of burning. So um, the last point is that <laughs> the last point is that you know you, you already know when you're born in and having gone through the counseling, um, stability, you know, uh, what other points, conflict resolution or mindset, you know, um, or, or management, you know, having gone through all of those driven, you know, having gone through all of those points and you know that you're born in, please get married get married mm. uh, person but you know I, I don't know how easy it will be for people or how easy it is for people who have not discovered their purpose not you don't you know not being able to manage conflict amicably and you're burning <laughs> I don't know <laughs> 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 oh, we just said like, <laughs> you know, just no, no, I don't know yeah, so, I think that we can laugh about this thing. We are best in people. <laughs> so, you know, um, one of the, you know, the good things about marriage is that anytime you're born, you can keep going. If, if my mom will permit that we have a, a session for that, a video for, for burning, you know. We don't video about sexual That was before we got married. Oh, after we got married. Yeah. I feel like the sun just yeah, just, just like that. Oh wow. Alright, so that was nice. Good to capture that. Actually, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank for you so much, guys. Time. I'm sure you found this helpful. Yeah. God bless you.